Hey everyone, Steven here, and welcome to my little library of horrors. Well, surprise, another video. Yeah, I'm a little shocked myself, actually. But, uh, yeah, so well, this video is going to be a book review. And um, I'm really excited about this one, actually. So a buddy of mine on Facebook had asked a question, a uh, list of questions, as a matter of fact. And one of the questions was, what is your most surprising read this year? And for me, that was a no-brainer. Um, uh, this book I, I've had for a while, and I remember picking it up at least once before. And I don't know, I don't think I was in the right mood for it at all. But um, I don't really remember how much I read of it. It couldn't have been more than a page or two, and I just, I just didn't, it didn't get me, so I put it down. But um, the concept has always really interested me. The story sounds great. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, when I read it, it turned out to be one of those books where, um, it really hits you and just kind of, you know, in an unexpected way, really end up connecting with some of the characters in the book, you know, where it's, it really reaches down into you and, and kind of holds up, you know, your insecurities to you and you're just like, oh, wow. But um, anyway, the book I'm talking about is called Good Neighbors by, Rabbit, by Ryan David John. Um, yeah, so this book is based on a true story. Um, it takes place on uh, March 13th of 1964. So, um, you know, racism is very rampant at this time. Um uh, crime is a uh, very high at this time. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, it takes place in Queens, and um, yeah, it's about the, um, a woman named I believe her name is Kitty. She gets attacked in her apartment complex. Um, all of her neighbors see it, but no one comes to help her. Nobody calls the police, and um, yeah, so it's like this really crazy story of how that happens basically and you know when I first read the synopsis about it I was like you know how, how does that happen how do you watch somebody get attacked and not do anything about it and uh yeah um the way it was explained was just like oh my god it's just insane just completely insane um yeah, the, the cast of characters is huge. Huge cast of characters. Like, Kitty's introduced as, obviously, kind of the main protagonist of the story. And, we like, she's introduced, obviously, in the beginning. And we don't get back to her character until page 66. So that's literally, like, 50-plus pages of all new characters getting introduced. It's so crazy how it all just kind of builds a web of how Kitty, like, connects them all together. It's just so insane. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The pacing is great. Um, like I said, you, you it, it throws a lot at you, but... Every character is so unique, so fleshed out in a way that it's so easy to keep track of everybody. And the way the chapters usually end is on like sort of a cliffhanger for every character until everything wraps up at the end. So it's like, you know, it, it's been a long time since I've had like, I drop my, when I drop my kids off at school, I'll... I'll bring my book to read. And um, I remember when I was getting near the end of the book, I literally sat in my, dri my driveway in my car for an hour after I dropped them off so I could finish the book because I just had to know what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Like I said, the pacing was awesome. Uh, the characters, like I said, are, are fantastic. There are so many good characters in this book. Um, you know, there's a character who is getting drafted to the war, but is also take care, taking care of his dying mother. 
Um, there is a character who uh, is contemplating suicide. Like, like that's his introduction. His he is like getting ready to kill himself. Um, there's a character who sh she finds out her husband has been having an affair. And then there's a swinger couple. <clears throat> well, it's, yeah, there's a swinger couple that introduces this other couple into it. It's the, that latter couple's first time. And this whole thing blows up. And, you know, there's ambulance drivers and a corrupt cop. And uh, it, like I said, the cast is huge. Just absolutely humongous. But told so well and so interestingly that it's very, like I said, very easy to keep track of whose story is what and what's going on at what time. Like there's, there was never a point where I was like, okay, wait, this character is this, these people do this. Instantly, right away, I knew who it was as soon as they came back onto scene. Um... Yeah, the overall story, again, fantastic. The way everything is told is believable. Like, like I said, like, that was the biggest intrigue to me to the story was, like, how is that even possible to happen? And I love books that are able to take seemingly impossible stories and making them possible. Um... Another really good example of that um, is Rules of the Road by C.B. Jones. Highly re recommend checking that book out as well. little shout out to that. I will review that eventually. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, anyway. Um, what else? So there's the characters, the story, the pacing. Um, what else? Uh... Yeah, I, I, everything in general was just just really fantastic about this. Um, I guess like what really ended up making this such a really like intimate read for me was two of the characters. Um, one character, Peter, he like basically he ends up kind of struggling with his masculinity in a way. You know, he feels that, you know, all his life he's kind of been a little effeminate, maybe, you know, he's like, <clears throat> you know, I don't know my way around a car and, you know, I like to do this thing that's not seen as masculine and things like that. And, you know, it's like a big insecurity with him and, and like how he handles that with his wife and you know it was like it was really just intense because it's like you know that's something I kind of struggle with myself is like you know I'm not you know I don't know my way around a car or and you know I do enjoy reading which isn't you know I guess really seen as a masculine hobby and you know it was just, you know what I mean? It was like kind of one of those moments where you're like, wow, this is like, you know, I thought maybe I was alone in this kind of feeling, you know, and it's like somebody is there to be, be like, hey, you know, you're not. And uh, <clears throat> the other character is David, I believe his name was. I believe his name was David. He is an ambulance driver. And, yeah, I don't really want to go too much into his story because I don't want to tell too much of the book. You really have to, you really have to read it to really kind of get, like, the full punch of it. Like, it's, it's, it's a big vengeance story, but with a really good outcome, like... Like, you know, like, cause I, I, I had really bonded with him over just kind of like our experience that we kind of share and, you know, it, it was, it was just really intense to see him. Like he had this opportunity that 
you know, I feel like I've wanted for a really long time. And then, but as they've gotten older, you know, it's not, I've realized that it's not what I want. And, you know, to see him battle with this and see the, the outcome, the, the ultimate outcome of, of it all was just kind of like, you know, like really hit me hard. But, uh, yeah, overall, you know, that, that's really what kind of made this book super special to me. It was like, you know, that, that surprise you get when you find a book that's like, you know, hey, you're not alone in this feeling that you have. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it kind of just reminds me of like when I first fell in love with reading, when my te my second grade teacher read James and the Giant Peach to us. <clears throat> you know, it was just, it was really cool. You know, it just kind of opened that that door to what reading really does and why I love it so much. And again, same with, you know, Stephen King's It when I was, you know, 24 and, you know, fell in love with reading again all over again because I kind of bonded with Richie so much. And yeah, so, but anyway, I got too invested in myself in that, I guess. But overall... I'm going to give this book a five-star rating. I really loved it, not just because of the personal connection I have with characters in it, but because of how well it's told overall. Like, this is absolutely a book that will have you white-knuckle gripping it, tearing through the pages to see what happens next and how everything unfolds for everybody. Um, so yeah, if you can get your hands on a copy of this, it's fairly cheap. Um, yeah, you can like, I think I actually just had to buy another copy because my, my youngest got to it and she tore the pages out of it. Yeah. But I at least got to finish it before she got to it. So, uh, but a new copy's on the way. So, but yeah, anyway, guys. Five out of five stars for me. Go check out Good Neighbors by uh, Ryan David uh, John. And uh, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate your time. Uh, drop a like if you'd like. Feel free to subscribe for future reviews. Um, I'm working on a book now that I'm really hoping I can have finished at least by Christmas. But it's going to be kind of tough. So if my next video is not my final book review of the year, it'll be my yearly wrap up and um, maybe some plans for the future, I guess. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye.